Hello, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, welcome you to this World River and the Delta System Source to Sink webinar series. Uh, this is uh, Paul Liu from uh, North Carolina State University. This talk series is co sponsored by ISF, NCSU, LSU, uh, State Key Lab, uh, STR and Coastal Research in Shanghai, and U Utrecht. Uh, Today is a great honor. We invite Professor Zheng Hongbo, Hongbo Zheng, Zheng Hongbo from Yunnan University, come here to talk about the birth of the Yangtze River, the timing and tectonic geomorphological implications. Before I introduce Professor Zheng, um, as always, I want to mention all our previous talk is uh, 116 talks have already well archived on our YouTube channel. So if you search source to sync or if you follow this tiny URL link, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel or on the Bailey Bailey station. So uh, um, next week, next Wednesday, the same time is also 8 p.m. in Beijing time, uh, a little bit one hour earlier than the normal speaking time, just like today, so next week. So Professor Eric Vlansky from James Cook University will come here to talk about the dams and the climate change impact to the coastal erosion, particularly in the Great Barrier Reef watershed region. I guess he maybe also talk about the impact to the, to the uh, coral reef over there. So it uh, should be a very great talk. It will be 10 p.m. in Australia local time. So uh, please mark your calendar. Um, as I mentioned, Professor Jim is a uh, uh, Hongbo is a, a UNA, professor in Yunnan University. is also a director research center for Earth System Science, and he's uh, also a head of the School of Ocean and Earth Science. Uh, used to be a head in the Tongji University, and also uh, uh, work on the Nanjing University. He graduated from Nanjing University. Uh, get a PhD from uh, University of Western Australia. And his research is two areas. One is tectonic geomorphology, uh, focused on the uplift of the Tib Tibetan Plateau. And uh, the other one is the post-global change, focused on the reconstructing Asian Muslim history. So, uh, Hongba, so now uh, please uh, share your screen and uh, start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, so can you see and hear me? Uh, we can hear you, and but uh, please share the screen. We haven't seen, seen your... Okay, I have to... Share the screen. Oh. Yeah, good. So what I do, I just uh, click, yeah. I still can see you. So should I leave you on the screen or? I uh, no, can you it? see your screen? You can go ahead and present. But I see, I can see your face in my screen, which is oh. okay. Or should I click off or can I? Yeah, click off. Yeah, you can close all, you can close all those. Okay, but don't, don't worry, I think I, it's, I can't do that. You can minimum all the participants, you know, just uh, yourself. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Get it? Yeah. Yes. Are you ready? You can go ahead. Okay. Okay, yes, I'm ready. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for organizing the, the seminar. We really appreciate what you have done for the community. Yeah, as uh, Paul uh, said, my talk will be about the birth of the Yangtze River, timing and the tectonic geomorphological imp implications. And from uh, the Research Center for Earth System Science, Yunnan University in China. My name is uh, Hongbo. In today's talk, I 
is pretty much about uh, the wrap up of what we have done in the last uh, 10 or 15 years uh, concerning the geology of the Yangtze River, particularly the geological history of the Yangtze River. So I will start with uh, a glance at the Yangtze River, why it is important and uh, what is uh, the age of the Yangtze River? Uh, what is the debate? And I will move to the second part, which is the, the main part of my talk tonight, which is about a, a, the evidence of a Paleo uh, Jinshajiang River, which used to flow in a, a southeast direction to the South China Sea. And the evidence will come from uh, uh, Jiantuan Basin, which is in the middle of the, of the river. And the uh, Hona uh, Basin, which is in the lower reach of the Red River. And uh, a little bit uh, um, evidence from uh, the uh, southeastern part of the Japan Plateau, which is called the Gongjue Basin. And uh, finally, I will show more evidence from the the lower reaches of the Yangtze River to show uh, the birth, the final establishment of the east uh, flowing river system. And, and uh, finally, a little bit about the tectonic uh, geomorphic implications of all those uh, uh, issues. So now I first start at a glance at the Yangtze River. Why is it important? Originating from Tibetan Plateau with a total length of uh, about 6,300 6, kilometers, the Yangtze River runs from through a series of tectonic geomorphic terrains, namely from the, from the source and to the sink. They are Tibetan Plateau, Yunnan Plateau, Sichuan Basin, Jianghan Basin, and East China Sea or East China Sea Basin. The Yangtze River, by all means, is a great river playing an important role in the Earth's surface processes of different spatial and uh, temporal scales, ranging from uh, sediment transportation, geochemical cycles, and environmental changes in the marginal seas. Uh, these two photos in the bottom show a, a field trip to the headwaters of the Yangtze River 2000 years ago. Actually, it was uh, in June 2020 and during the pandemic. And so the trip was wonderful and it was hard and it was uh, challenging. And so this is uh, exactly the glacial where the first drip of, th of the water, of the Yangtze water comes from, from the melting glacial at high elevation in central Tibet. Uh, the development of large river systems in Asia is closely linked to the evolving topography during the Cenozoic. Uplift of Tibetan Plateau following India Eurasia Glacier is the most single important geological event that has largely shaped the landscape of the region. Although the timing of the uplift is still a matter of great debate. On the other hand, study on the geology of the rivers may shed light on understanding the uplift history of the Tibetan Plateau. Despite of this, the age of the Yangtze River has been strongly debated over a time period as long as a century. Looking back the last century, there has been no shortage of scientific publications 
on the Yangtze River, ranging from monographs to uh, uh, particle uh, to uh, uh, articles, especially specifically targeting the history of the river. Uh, the first paragraph uh, uh, monograph was published in 1907 by Willis. If you look at this, it's a very, very old uh, monograph talking about the geology of the Yangtze River. Don't worry about uh, the Chinese. I'm, I'm here, I'm just showing uh, the great number of uh, uh, people, papers, everything. So, and uh, followed uh, Willis in the last century. Uh, there are a great number of articles uh, by scientists from both the geology and the, and the geomorphology communities are focusing on the age of the river. So I put here as a century old debate and it's not a exaggeration at all. As, as a matter of fact, it is just over a century, the debate. So to summarize all the different works, I just put uh, the authors together with their proposes, proposed ages of the Yangtze River by different uh, authors. And uh, they can be, although they are in Chinese, don't worry about Chinese, but actually many of the, of the papers are in English as a matter of fact. And I broke them into a different ages. Uh, different ages start from late Pleistocene, which is around uh, less than a million years old, a few hundred thousand years old, and early Pleistocene, one to two million years old, and the Miocene, which is about 20 million, 20 to three, four million years old, and as old as earlier Eocene, uh, which is uh, uh, about 45 million years old. So I don't uh, want to go to the details of, of, of all this work. And if you are interested, you can, you can just yeah, go into the specific uh, articles. But here I'm just uh, giving you a very brief summary to show uh, the debate. So now we have to ask how is the age or the birth of the Yangtze River defined? And the second question is, what was the proposed model of the evolution of the Yangtze River? Particularly, what is the model that is uh, widely accepted or dominant the community? Now, now, first, let me start with the definition of the birth of the Yangtze River. Well, this is a, a sketch map of the Yangtze River region, okay, before the Yangtze River came into existence as a single eastward flowing river system. So prior to the birth of the Yangtze River, the, the, the model suggests that there are probably higher elevation in the eastern part of, of China. Uh, okay, this is, uh, imagine this is China. And the relatively lower elevation in the west, in the Tibetan Plateau region, when there wasn't a Tibetan Plateau, of course. So all I'm talking about is relative to the present. And there was no, as I said, there was no single eastward through flowing river system, but there were segments in different directions to draining into different basins, such as the Jianghan Basin in central part of uh, the river and the uh, Subi, the Yellow Sea uh, uh, Basin or the East China Sea Basin. So different basins, different uh, uh, segments, different directions, and possibly, most likely, this basin, the Jianghan Basin, is internal. Uh, enclosed basin. Okay. The third point is 
upper Jinsha Jiang Valley, uh, uh, river, the upper Jinsha Jiang, the Paleo Jinsha Jiang, flew in this direction and continued through the Paleo Red River into the South China Sea. And uh, at some stage in Quaternary, in Pleistocene, the lower Jinsha Jiang River captured the upper one and to form the first bend. I will come back to the first bend later. To form this first bend, so to give birth to this single eastward uh, through flowing uh, modern Yangtze River. So the birth of the modern Yangtze River is accomplished by joining all those segments to, to form this single eastward flowing river system. And this was proposed by Professor Yen in 1959. I will come back to this. So in terms of the, the study of the Yangtze River, there are few areas or regions which have been regarded as the key area in terms of understanding the history of the Yangtze River. The first uh, area is the first bend of the Yangtze River, and the second is the three gorge. And uh, there are other few areas. I will come to them uh, one by one later. But first, uh, let's pay our attention to the first bend. Because the first bend is in the view of geomorphology is very obscure. Originating from central Tibet, the Jinsha Jiang, which is the upper stream of the Yangtze River, flow down the slope of a uh, southeastern margin of Tibetan Plateau in a southward direction first, but making a very sharp, a V-shaped uh, bend here uh, in a village uh, named Shigu. And uh, so that this bend is called the first bend of the Yangtze River. And, and this first bend has been, as I said, regarded as a key place to understanding the history of the Yangtze River. And therefore, it has been intensively studied over the last century. Well, uh, in, in terms of uh, how the first bend was formed, uh, as I said, the, the first proposal was made by uh, uh, Professor Yen from Nanjing University in 1959. And, uh, this hypothesis or model has been uh, known widely in the uh, 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 geography or geology community. And I, actually it has been a dominant view. It has been dominating uh, the view or the, the, the community of the Yangtze River studies for more than uh, half a century. So let me explain uh, how the, the first band was formed, which was proposed by Professor Jin. As we just uh, mentioned, the, the Jinsha Jiang, the upper Yangtze River, comes down this way and making a, a V-shaped bend here in the, in the first bend area. Okay, Jinsha Jiang used to flow this way through the Jianchuan Valley, okay? You can see from this SEM map, there, there is a, a valley we call it the Jianchuan Valley because this is uh, uh, the name of the county, the town here is Jianchuan County. And uh, continue from uh, Jianchuan Valley down the Red River to the South China Sea. But later on, the lower part of the Jinsha Jiang captured the upper part. 
uh, sometime in Pleistocene, about let's say about one or two million years ago, to form the first band. So the first band was a typical capture point as regard by uh, Professor Yen and the many, many followers. So the formation of the first band gave birth to the modern Yangtze River, the so-called eastward through flowing river system. And this was exactly what they proposed in their uh, original uh, article uh, more than half a century uh, ago. So if this was true, then this Jiantran Valley would have been the Paleo Jinshajiang River Valley. And uh, it has been abandoned since the capture. And this was actually also proposed by uh, Professor Yun at all. However, if you go to the valley and, and, and make serious geological observation, you will see uh, uh, the geological and the geomorphic character of the Jiantran Valley. And so all those photos are about the Jiantran Valley. As a matter of fact, based on geological observation, we realized that Jiantran Valley is a rift basin. Although there are many, many terrors like uh, uh, terrace. Okay, the jump of the, the, the landscape is a, is a, a terrace like uh, a landscape, but those terraces are not river terraces. They are just ri uh, rift basin and they are just rift terrace. And uh, based on uh, the drilling of this valley sediment, uh, people found no sediment uh, of a big river origin, which means that there was no uh, evidence for a Paleo Jishijang River through this Jiantran Valley. Uh, in conclusion, this Jiantran Valley is just a rift uh, basin. See, this is a uh, uh, Jinshajiang this way. Okay, this is a Jinshajiang this way, and this is supposed to be the wind gap proposed by Jin et al. And, and they, they proposed that Jin Shaijiang used to flow this way, okay, down. This is the, the northern part of Jiantran Valley. This is the, the central part. So now the conclusion is the Jiantran Valley is not an abundant river valley. So if Jin, Jin Shaijiang River had flowed southward, the, geolo the geological evidence was not preserved in this valley, but it's not the end of the story because as we make our geological observation, we realize that the evidence for a large river system is not preserved in the Jiantran Valley instead it is preserved in the Jiantran Basin and in the geological term, Jiantran Basin actually is, a, 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 is just a succession of, uh, of Cenozoic plastic uh, sediments. Uh, it, it is not, in, in terms of uh, the landscape, it is not a basin. It is, a, 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 as a matter of fact, this is on the surface of the current Vietnam Plateau uh, in this shade area. Okay, this is Jiantran Basin, and this is uh, the surface of the current Jiantran, uh, sorry, Yunnan Plateau at elevation of 20, 25 to 30 hundred mil, uh, meters. And so this is uh, what we called the Jiantran Basin instead of the Jiantran Valley. So, Let's go to Jiantran Basin to see 
what we can see in the field. Okay, so standing on top of the Yunnan Plateau surface, you see beautiful uh, plastic sediments, horizontal sediments, just lying on the surface beautifully. And if we, we go a bit closer, we see the old sandstone uh, uh, conglomerate and uh, and beautifully volcanic rocks. So now let's uh, focus on examining all those uh, plastic sediment and see what they tell us about the river history. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, the this is the uh, the stratigraphy of the of the Cenozoic sequence as I put them together. And uh, uh, roughly speaking, we can divide the unit into the lower part and the upper part. And uh, the lower part is pre pre predominantly uh, red uh, conglomerate, uh, coarse sandstone, which is called Baoxiangsi formation. Uh, okay, so Baoxiangsi form, there's a little bit other formation but uh, it, this is minor. So this is the major, uh, un, uh, major part of the lower unit, which is uh, Baoxiangsi formation. And uh, basically Baoxiangsi formation, uh, we start from the bottom. The, this is a conglomerate. This is a, a coarse uh, conglomerate. And uh, again, in the middle conglomerate, upper middle uh, sandstone. Okay, so uh, if we examine the conglomerate carefully, we see this uh, very bad sorting uh, angular shape. So this is a very poor sorting. Uh, so all in all, all these uh, sedimentary facets uh, show that there's no large river uh, in this basin at this moment. And all the sediments are proximal source. So remember, this is the, the lower part of the unit of the, of the Jianchuan Sinozoic sequence. We call it Baoxiangsi formation. Okay, let's go further up. When we go further up, this is a Baoxiangsi formation and the upper part, part of the upper unit is Jinsichang formation. And you see that there's a sharp change in terms of a color, in terms of texture, everything. So in summary, the upper, uh, the Jinsu Chang formation is composed of a uh, uh, pale yellowish quartz feldspar sandstone. And uh, if we examine uh, carefully, this sandstone has relatively actually quite good sorting and run this. And this indicate that this sandstone is of uh, a large fluvial system and it, it is large. It is a distal because you need uh, a long distance to have a good sorting uh, run this and also uh, get rid of uh, all those heavy minerals so that you have a high maturity you have a quartz, you have feldspar sandstone. So this means that uh, this river system is large and uh, is, is long. Okay, apart from uh, Jin Chang formation, the, the, the sandstone, uh, we have uh, uh, another little formation uh, in the upper unit. It is lacustrine carbonate. Uh, this carbonate is regarded as part of this fluid system. Uh, okay, I have to get rid of the, okay. So yeah, so this carbonate is part of this upper unit and it is uh, synchronous with uh, the James Chang. Um, uh, 
sandstone, which is part of a same fluid system. Apart from this, we also have a, a in this upper unit, Trunker Formation, which is a very famous locally, a core series, core series. And uh, as we know that the core was formed in swamp, and it is it was again also part of this large fluid system. And uh, of course, we have done delicate uh, investigation about all those, uh, uh, apart from the physics analysis in the field, we have done a point counting of the conglomerate, a pedal current measurement, and uh, uh, more, more importantly, we have done a lot of uh, uh, uranium lab ages. Uh, of the trisol zircon to characterize the, uh, the sandstone. And uh, our sorry, I think I have a I, I did something wrong. Sorry. That's fine. No, no problem. Because, you know, because Paul, the, I have uh, put a lot of uh, high quality photos in the, in the slides. So maybe the memory. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. It, I, okay. I have trouble with uh, the high quality photos. <laughs> so uh, in, in summary, uh, just wrap up what I have uh, said about this sequence, large fluid system. Uh, and, and that is to say the sandstone, the carbonate, the core flew southward during mid to late Eocene. And this is uh, another view of this beautiful uh, Jin Sichang formation. And you can see that this sandstone is right on top of the, of the surface of Yunnan Plateau, which is uh, uh, 3,000 meters elevation at this moment. And so uplift of Yunnan Plateau began in latest use. Uh, and Jiantuan Basin immersed, causing the Paleo Jinshajiang River to be diverted to the Northeast. I will come back to this. So that we can see that uh, this, all the ages uh, comes from the volcanic rocks in, 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 in embedded in this sandstone and in the sandstone uh, uh, below, of course. So this volcanic rocks uh, provided beautiful, precise constraint on the age of this, uh, uh, all those uh, uh, fluvial sequences and the surface of this uh, sequence, Jin Chang formation is dated to be about 35 million years old. So, uh, and this is why we say that this river ceased, this Paleo Jinshajiang River ceased at around 35 million years in Jiantuan Basin. So, to, again, to wrap up what I just said about the Jin sorry, the Jiantuan uh, 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 sequence, uh, we have a uh, uh, put forward this simple model about the formation of the first band and the birth of the Yangtze River. So in early EOC, we see that this is a proximal provenance, internal basin. We have a, a conglomerate, we have a coarse sandstone, very poor sorting uh, and uh, very poor runness. And mid late EOC, we have a, a large river system a distal provenance, outflowing drainage uh, develop, developing in Jiantuan Basin in this direction and uh, uh, flowing through the Paleo Red River. We have uh, actually uh, other uh, publications 
uh, specifically talking about why and how this river uh, flew through the Paleo uh, Red River to the South China Sea. And the uh, latest EUC and after EUC, uh, Jiantuan Basin uh, was invested because of the uplift of Yunnan Plateau as part of the southeast margin of Tibetan Plateau. And so the river was diverted to this direction, the northeast direction. And, and this uh, gave uh, to the birth of this first bend and then the birth of the Yangtze River. So uh, now our conclusion uh, indicate that first bend was not a capture uh, in the first place, it's not a capture point as proposed by Professor Yin at all. It is just part of this tectonic geomorphic process. And, and you may ask why river goes this way? It, it just, uh, you know, follow the local uh, uh, faulting system, uh, which is very popular in, in Yunnan Plateau or in Tibetan Plateau. You, are, you have no shortage of, of different faulting systems for the river to flow. So, had uh, been had there been a large distal fluvial system, uh, as we called the Paleo Jiangsu in southeastern Tibetan Plateau, uh, the next question is where was the possible headwater? Of course, when we talk about a large fluvial system, uh, which had a uh, headwater and the headwater uh, most likely it was located in Tibetan plateau region when there wasn't a high plateau as high as today but there must be some kind of hinterland and uh, so our next target is to go to Tibetan plateau to see uh, to examine whether there is any uh, uh evidence and as a matter of fact this is uh, uh the place where we have spending many years uh, carrying out field work in one of the basins called gongjue basin which is uh, in the southeastern margin of southeastern tibetan plateau so we have uh, uh spent a lot of time the last four or five years working on the on the basin sediment. And this is what you see in the field, a beautiful, beautiful fluvial sequence uh, up to a thousand meters thickness. And, uh, and uh, luckily, again, we have a volcanic rock, volcanic ash, volcanic clust uh, sediment in the sequence to, to provide a precise constraint on the age of the sequence. So uh, we have uh, uh, published some work, preliminary work about the magnetostratigraphy and, and the sedimentology of the sequence. And uh, we have uh, done some uh, uh, prominence study, uh, preliminary prominence study, and uh, all those uh, preliminary, preliminary uh, prominence study uh, indicate that this uh, fluvial system has uh, flow down this way uh, all the way down to the same direction to the Jiantuan Basin along the uh, Jinshajiang, uh, uh, I mean, along the present day Jinshajiang direction, and uh, possibly, most likely, uh, following the Paleo Red River to the South China Sea. So, as I said, all the evidence suggests that there exists a large river system, uh, the so-called 
Paleo Jinsha Jiang and the Paleo Red River. I didn't talk about uh, Paleo Red River uh, much today because because of the time. But if you are interested, uh, there is a paper by Clift at all about this in detail. And so if the upper Yangtze River, the Paleo Jinsha Jiang, change it, its course from this direction, the southward direction to eastward direction to form the modern Yangtze River, then the sediments from the lower part of the Yangtze River uh, from the upper uh, stream, uh, for example, the Tibetan Plateau area, uh, the sediments from this area should be able to arrive the lower uh, ridge of the Yangtze River at some uh, uh, stage. And, and this is actually uh, the chain of the evidence. This is the, the logic so, so that we not only have evidence from here, from here, and from here, we need evidence from the lower part of the Yangtze River to show that the existence of this uh, fluid system. And this is uh, what we're going to show you. Okay, in the lower Yangtze River uh, ridge, there are series of uh, uh, Cenozoic basins, namely Jianghan Basin, uh, uh, Jiang, sorry, Subei South Yellow Sea basins, uh, Subei Yellow Sea Basin, and uh, East China Sea uh, uh, South Basin. We have a uh, an article, a uh, few articles, uh, specifically talking about uh, the basins and uh, uh, how the basin was formed, and uh, what it was the sequence and all the chronology. And if you are interested, uh, you can uh, uh, refer to to check out these articles. But today I'm going to focus on the sediments, the class sediments, the Yangtze gravel in the lower uh, reaches of the Yangtze River. And this is a uh, quite famous, uh, to be honest, uh, along uh, the lower, uh, the course of the lower uh, reaches of the Yangtze River. Uh, there, there is a, a series of, uh, uh, well, the so-called Yangtze gravel starting from uh, uh, the Three Gorge uh, to the middle part and uh, to Nanjing, the Delta area. And uh, it's been a great debate about uh, first, the age of the variable, and, and the second, the prominence of the variable. And uh, most people believe that the sediment is closely associated with the formation of this young river. But what is the age of the gravel? Well, in Nanjing area, there is, of course, beautiful uh, sequence, fluvial of fluvial origin. You can see that there is a huge uh, pile of sediments uh, north of the Yangtze River uh, near Nanjing city, the big city of Nanjing in this area. And luckily, again, we have a lot of basalt either covering the sequence or interbedded in the sequence. Again, those basalt provide a good opportunity to constrain the age of the sequence uh, because before uh, the sequence was believed to be, to be around, uh, well, Pliocene or Pleistocene age. But as a matter of fact, as we dated, we found that uh, the basalt is, can be as old as 22, 23, even older, uh, so that the classed sediments, the fluvial sediments is older than Miocene, as we put pre-Miocene age. And uh, we have uh, again carried out uh, a prominent study 
on the sediment based on uh, uranium lead uh, ages of detrital and, uh, and, uh, and the and and the geochemistry and uh, and based on all those prominent study, we come to the conclusion that uh, uh, a river and that is pretty much similar to today has already uh, supply sediment to the lower uh, reach, I mean, to the, even to the Delta area since as early as, well, pre-Miocene uh, could be older and as it turned out to be, uh, can be latest use in time as the evidence uh, from the upper stream. So in summary, a source what flowing river system the Paleo Jinshajiang River existed in southeastern margin of dependent plateau during mid to late Eocene. Uplift of Yunnan Plateau divert the Paleo Jinshajiang River to flow northeastward, forming the first bend, gave birth to the modern Yangtze River. Sediments from lower Yangtze River indicate that a river similar to the present one came into existence prior to Miocene, uh, most likely, I, I, as we know, uh, latest Eocene. Uh, this is uh, the first bend of the Yangtze River. Uh, this is uh, the front page. This is the photo we took, uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, used as the front page of that uh, PNS uh, issue. So in terms of uh, uh, the tectonic geomorphic uh, implications of the river uh, system. I only have a, a little time to, to touch uh, uh, briefly. Well, apparently uplift of Yunnan Plateau, as, as I, I mentioned uh, many, many times in my talk, as part of Tibetan Plateau began in latest use as from our uh, the evidence from the river history. And this also has important implication about the timing of uplift of Tibetan Plateau. Of course, this is a, 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 another great issue that is uh, beyond the scope of today's talk, but this is my high interest for uh, 10 or, or 20 years, um, but I'm not going to talk about this today. Well, uh, I didn't show you, uh, I didn't, uh, uh, draw your attention to the color of the sequence. I, I, as, a, as a matter of fact, you can see that the lower, uh, the gen trend sequence is divided into two uh, upper and lower unit. And the lower unit is red color, as you see, and the, the upper unit is light color. The red bed of Baoxiang Si formation, particularly the Yulin sandstone, I didn't show you, uh, there's a thick sequence of, of Yulin sandstone in the middle of the Baoxiang Si formation, which is indicate arid climate during, during this time in southeastern Tibetan Plateau. And uh, at around 36 million years old, the sequence changed from Baoxiang Si to the upper unit, Jin Si Chang, under the coal sequence. So the large fluvial system, the sandstone, together with coal and carbonate, during later years, in around 36 million years ago, indicate onset of monsoon climate in Tibetan Plateau. So this is uh, another information uh, coming from uh, the Sinozoic sequence from the Gentran Basin, and this was published recently in Progress in Earth and Primary Science. So I like to finished my talk today uh, with this uh, last uh, slide. And this is uh, the statue of Xu Xiaqe at the first bend of the Yangtze River. Xu Xiaqe was a pioneer geographer in Ming Dynasty. If you know, it was about 400 years ago, spending his whole life exploring the geography of China. And his last expedition was to uh, search for the headwater of the Yangtze River. He spent his final days of his life in Yunnan province where I'm based now. 
and his scientific expedition ended in Yunnan when he was about when he was 50 years old and he died uh, at 51 and uh, so carved on the statue is his historical paper entitled Expedition of the Headwater of the Yangtze River. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Omba, thank you uh, so much. Uh, such a great, wonderful story about the Yangtze River, particularly the first band. And uh, let's see, uh, beautiful, I, I, I learned a lot. Uh, let's see if uh, you have any question, uh, go ahead to unmute yourself and ask Professor Humber directly, or if you like, you can type on the chat, but I encourage you just to directly speak to him, ask him, or if you, whatever, if you want to ask him in Chinese, it's okay, we can translate. Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, go ahead. Oh, Chen, oh, Chen, oh, oh, Professor Chen, do you have a question? Yes. Okay, Professor Chen, can't hear you. Okay, that's maybe a microphone issue, I don't know. So anybody else? Uh, yeah, well, why are we waiting Professor Chen? Oh, no, maybe coming. Yeah, Humba, maybe I ask you a question. We cannot Please. hear from Professor. Please, Chen. yeah. Okay. Oh, so you, you talk about the the uh, the the Yuanan plateau and uh, the it's uplifting. What, what what's the uplifting reach? What's the uh, how much total you know elevation was uh, pushed up? Yeah, this is a really uh, poor. Yeah, my answer is uh, twofold. One, uh, because uh, before people believed that, you know, Yunnan Plateau was uh, young, was Pliocene, Pleistocene. Well, this, this uh, fluid sequence, I mean, from uh, the Jiantuan Basin uh, uh, tells us at least, well, if we assume that the river, when the river was flowing, the elevation must be very low because we have other evidence. How low, we don't know. Let's say a few hundred meters. But mm -hmm. now it is about 3000 meters. So the oh. net uplift is about at least 2000 meters uh, from the latest using, oh. let's say 30 or 35. So, so this is how much it was uplifted and this, when it start, and this is this has a very very uh, important implication. Uh, if we if we transfer or if we think about a uh, uh, Tibetan plateau as a whole, so because the southeastern part is is part of Tibetan plateau, and so and and there's a a there's a, a geodynamo to explain. So this is another paper I'm writing. So why, oh. how uh, uh, Yunnan uh, was uplifted this time and this much? Yeah. Okay. Oh, very, very good. Okay, uh, Professor Chen. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Professor Chen, yes, yes, I can hear you. I guess he's a uh, freeze again. We lose you again. 
I, I took uh, Professor Chen to, to the field once, briefly. OK. So while we are waiting uh, Professor Chen's connection, uh, Hongbo, can you check the chat? There's a couple of questions in the chat room. Oh, I, I don't know. I, oh, yeah, OK. Is there any possibility about of the India summer monsoon had if Oh, uh, okay. So the question, should I read? Yeah, go ahead. Is there any possibility about the, the evolution of Indian summer monsoon had influenced the formation of the first band of the Yangtze River? This is a, can I uh, say something? Uh, this is a, a very, very uh, a good question because this is why uh, in the end of the, my talk, I mentioned the Asian monsoon. Actually, this is uh, uh, the monsoon. Uh, uh, again, monsoon is uh, another big uh, story issue. You know, I can only say that this is uh, the evidence we, we, uh, we obtained from uh, uh, Jian Chuan. And this is uh, apparently uh, different from uh, the, the, the popular or the dominant view about the timing of the onset of the monsoon. And I pushed the onset to be about 36 million years old, which was which is older than the dominant uh, view. Okay, this is the summary. Okay, yes. You, if you want to have a river, you need two things. One is the valley, and two is the water. Without the monsoon or without the rainfall, you don't have a, a big river. That's for sure. So this is why. Uh, before uh, uh, 36 million years old, you don't have, uh, uh, this is pretty arid, as I said, this is uh, even as arid as, as desert. So there was no large river. Uh, but interestingly, not only there was no uh, rainfall, but also uh, uh, in terms of a uh, tectonic geomorphology, this basin was an enclosed uh, proximal uh, internal basin without a large river. So, uh, the first band is not necessarily uh, uh, related to the monsoon, but the fluvial system as a whole must have had a lot to do with the onset of the monsoon, the rainfall. Mm. Very good. So uh, are you able to see the second question, you know, from Ximin? Uh, why should you? Okay, so from uh, Professor Chen, Paleo, Paleo Jin Sha Jiang flew to the South China Sea uh, uh, during, six, uh, during 36, 35 million years. And uh, after 35, Paleo Jin Sha Jiang flew to Sichuan Basin. And then the Yangtze River was established. That's, yeah, sorry for the translation because I, yeah, I just, okay, yeah. So yes, indeed, in, in summary or uh, in conclusion, uh, when the first band was formed, it was not just the first band, it was the establishment of the whole fluvial sequence. Uh, and this is why it was so critical for us to not only uh, stay around the first bend. But first of all, uh, no, sorry, after the first bend, we need uh, the chain of evidence. And this is why we go upper to the, to the uh, Tibetan plateau to, to, to find uh, the headwater. And then we go down to the uh, Paleo Red River to the South China Sea to see whether this was indeed a fluvial system in this direction. And then, mm -hmm. After the first bend, why we go to the lower reaches of the, of the Yangtze River, which is uh, Wuhan or Nanjing. And, and this is why we need evidence from the lower uh, part to see whether the sediments from the upper stream uh, was able to, to arrive in the lower part. If the, the answer is yes, then we are sure that a easternward flow through river system was established so that the sediment could
could transfer from, could be transported from the upper all the way down to the, to the lower. So that mm. the whole connection is finished by this time. Sorry, Professor Chen. Yeah, you are, you, we didn't, I can, I can answer you when I, when I uh, finished my. So, so talk. Well, that's, that's a very interesting uh, question because, you know, uh, 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 some people, you know, uh, Shimi also asked about the 22 million thing. So actually, you know, uh, because it's not uh, the Jin Sha Jiang and the Yang Zui formation is not a single event. It's also uh, just a side, side uh, effect of the whole area tectonic uh, uh, geomorphology, uh, 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 it, it, you know, uh, the movement. And for example, the Nine High Basin, we know the South China Sea Basin starting from 30 to 33, you know. And uh, so um, the Tibetan plateau uplifting, of course, 30, you know, uh, it's, it's a whole system. It, exactly. It's, we should, yeah, we should have a big picture. Even uh, we need to also look at the, like the sediment uh, to the Mekong River or to the Urawadi, you know, uh, or, or, or Bumaputra, the, the one flew to South. Uh, how the, the telecommunicate, how they impact yes, yes. each other. That's, that's the thing we should have a big product. This is why, you know, a few years ago, uh, Yinping and uh, many of us tried to make a proposal to drill the, 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 the Ottoman Sea. Mm. And also now currently Peter Clift is writing this proposal uh, to drill the Mekong. So they all, yeah, connected. They all uh, uh, linked. Uh, indeed, the South China Sea is part of this system. Yeah. Exactly. The yeah. opening of the South China Sea, the Ailao Shan Red River Fort, all uh, uh, linked together. Yes. The, the, the Yunnan Plateau uh, is, a, is a bridge in the middle, the western part is Tibet. The, the okay. end part is, is the South China Sea. In the middle is the, the Yunnan Plateau. And the, the rivers, mm -hmm. they, are so, just, uh, they are just trying to link all yeah, the- Yeah, that's, that's, that's an amazing whole, whole story. Uh, one more thing uh, you mentioned about the Jian Chuan Basin. So you said uplift up maybe up to 2000 meters. And yeah. so before the uplifting, so yeah. the, from Sichuan Basin in the, the lower yeah. part of Jinsha Jiang. So yes. it, back that time, uh, it, did it flow to the west instead of today to the east? Is it flowing to the, it's, uh, you know, that part? Also Good question. To... This, yeah, this is, uh, at least this was the proposal in the original proposal. That was the case. The, uh -huh. the, the Jinsha Jiang and the, the Chuan Jiang, the middle part of the Jinsha Jiang is yeah. called Chuan Jiang. They, they came from this two direction and join at the first bend and then flow to the south. But okay. I, because now in Sichuan Basin, there isn't, there isn't Sinozoic sediments. This is a mystery. So there is wow. no record. Mm. That's the, Previously, people only study the, the terrace. You know, the terrace, uh, the geomorphology is the, only the surface. It is the latest yeah. part of the river history. The older part is preserved in the sediments in the basin. Okay, But in Sichuan Basin, it, it is a great mystery in earth science that there is no Sinozoic sediments, uh, except there is a little bit from the Longmen Shan area in the, in the mountain front. Mm. But in the central part of Sichuan Basin, there's no uh, uh, Sino sequence. And my interpretation is that because the Yangtze River has taken all the sediments down to the, to the lower part. Okay, that, that's so wonderful. Sichuan you Basin know, uh, is a bypass basin. So uh, I think Hongbo, maybe a couple of uh, colleagues who should think about the project, you know, that this is a real source to think a product from Himalaya. 
to the Ganges Brahmaputra, to the Urawadi Andaman Sea, to the South China Sea Basin, to East China Sea, you know, from the center, from the, uh, that uplifting. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Um, how about we do this? It's more than one hour. Um, we can record, stop the recording here. Then the next, if people have, you, if you have time, you can stay a little bit longer. You know, we can discuss it more, a little bit more in Chinese, if, uh, you know, if you have time. Okay, so let me stop the live stream.